Okay, so as always, just going over some of the harder topics here. Um, I want to review um, just kind of the insurance as a whole before we look at a couple of the harder questions. This test is only going to be 10 questions, so it's not going to be 10 or 9, actually, now that I think about it. Um, not going to be super long. Lots of things are super easy. But again, there are some things that you really just have to understand. There's nothing on the formula sheet to really help you out. And if you read the question and don't know the vocabulary, you're kind of out of luck. So just to review for insurance. So you're going to have a question about ta uh, talking about the premium that you're paying. Remember, you pay that regardless of whether or not you get into an accident. You could pay that your whole life and never get into an accident. But we do have to pay it every single month. I should not say that, though, because when you sign up for car insurance, again, they tell you your annual premium. They want you to pay that all at once, but you can choose to pay it monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually because most of the time, most people can't afford to just pay the whole year's worth of car insurance at once because it's pretty expensive. So if they say they want to pay it monthly, how do we go from a year down to a month? What do we do? This is dividing by 12, right? If we're going from the year down to a month, we divide by 12. You can also choose to pay it quarterly, which how do we go from a year down to one quarter? What do we do for that? This is divide by four, right? Four quarters in a year is four quarters in anything. If there are quarters, there's four of them. And semi-annual, we tend to forget, if I want the annual and then take it down to a semi-annual payment, what do we need to do? This is divide by two. So again, that would be how many payments you would make in a year. If you're paying it monthly, you'd make 12 payments. If you're paying it quarterly, you make four payments. Semi-annually, two. Or annual, again, you pay it the whole year. The, the fewer payments you make, the more expensive it is for that payment because we're taking the whole year and splitting it into payments, yeah? So these would be the smallest payments. These would be the bigger payments. Then just remember, a fee will be tacked on to the payment if you choose not to pay the whole year all at once. So in the question, it might say something like this. We have a $2,000 annual premium. We choose to pay it monthly. So to start off with, what should you do? If we have a 2000 annual and we want to divide it up into monthly payments, we should divide by 12, right? So 2000 divided by 12. However, again, they tell you that's okay if you don't want to pay it monthly, but we're going to tack on a surcharge. What do you just do with that $3? Well, whatever this answer is, you add three, right? And then that's it. That would be, you're done with the question. So pay very close attention to what the conversion is. It's going to change on the test. You might not have monthly. You might not have quarterly. Yeah. So make sure you know all three of those. Divided by 12 is monthly, quarterly four is manually two. Now, I want to also refresh the phrasing for the insurance questions because depending on the information given to you can change the way you think about the question. So if they say this person has blah, blah worth of insurance, they say $10,000 worth of insurance or $20,000 worth of insurance. Remember what that is. That tells us the most the insurance company will pay. If I say I have this much worth of insurance, the insurance company is there to help you out with those payments when you cause an accident. Because yeah, if you didn't have insurance, you're paying for all of the damages yourself out of your own pocket. So if I say I have $10,000 worth of insurance, that is the most the insurance company will pay for me. And then if there's any extra damages, I am going to have to pay the rest. So be careful if it says that. That's what the insurance company will pay at most. Make sure you understand what that means too. Deductible, who pays the deductible? You pay for the deductible, right? So if I have a $500 deductible, I have to pay that $500 and then the insurance will cover the rest, right? So depending on what information, you're going to have one question each. You're going to have one question that says worth of insurance and one question that says deductible. And you need to know what the difference is and how we attack that. Uh, I should say apply that information to the question. Also pay very close attention to who they're asking for. Remember, you have the damages. And then you have it split up into the person, whatever their name happens to be, and the insurance company. 
They can ask for either of these. So you can understand the situation totally fine, but if you give me the wrong answer, if, if, if they're asking for the insurance company and you give me the person, you're getting it wrong. So make sure you pay close attention to what question, um, which of these they're asking for for your answer. But you'll see, some, you'll see those questions in the quizzes. Like I said, I just wanted to kind of review the concepts for insurance. You will see those questions in the quizzes when you do the full review. Linking at number one, though, for this, now we're getting into the harder questions. So, sorry, there's a plastic thing on the ground. I thought it was a bug. I'm good. <laughs> number one, Marco has purchased a new car for $30,000. It's making model straight line depreciates. I should have already had this pulled up. But you need to remember this is on your formula sheet. Straight line depreciation is this huge chunk right here. Oh, I said choose. Um, that's because I copied this from um, quizzes and I made it a multiple choice. So write the straight line depreciation equation that models the situation. So if they say this, write the equation. This is a y equals mx plus b. I might, on your test, make this a free response that I'll have to go back through and grade. You must type it entirely yourself. I'm kind of debating how I want to do that. On the quizzes, it's a multiple choice. But um, we need this. Write this straight line appreciation equation. We need this. So you have to remember that if this is what we need, the Y and the X stay put. It's the M and the B that get plugged in, right? So on your formula sheet, it tells you what M and B are. So take a moment. We do this for M. Negative starting value over the number of years to depreciate. Take a moment, and again, you should have that out. I'll go ahead and copy it. Why not? I'll be nice. M equals negative starting value over number of years to depreciate. Find our M in this question. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, starting value, negative 30,000. You just tack the negative on yourself, guys. The negative doesn't magically appear. You have to put it there, and it's 20 years to depreciate. So you've got 30,000 divided by 20. So you should have gotten negative 1,500. That's what this is. And again, that's our M. That's where M goes. And then we look back to our formula sheet. We need to know what we're going to plug in for the B. What is the B? B is the starting value of the car. So what's going to go in for B here? 30,000. And that's your answer. The question said, write the equation. Whoops, it's a terrible box. And we have written in the equation. Y equals negative 1,500X plus 30,000. Just make sure, again, you leave the Y and the X there. They stay put when you want the equation. Okay, now you're also going to have one question where you plug in to um, the formula. Depending on what you're given, though, will change whether or not you plug into Y or if you plug into X. So you have to read very carefully. Again, on your test, you will only be given one of these. I want you to know which one is which. So here's my equation. The question being asked here is how many years will it take for the car to be worth 1150? Sorry, 11500. It does also tell you here what X represents and what Y represents. So based on what it tells us X and Y represent, as well as the fact that they gave us 11,500, is that going to get plugged in the X spot or the Y spot? That's going to get plugged into the Y spot because Y is the worth of the car and that's what the 11,500 is. So. If this is the case, if you are given money, it's going to go in for Y. And Y is on the left side of the equal sign. Right? That's where Y goes. So that's where this goes. Don't know how to make that any more clear, right? Everything else just gets copied because we're only plugging into Y. We're not doing anything else. So from here, I'm going to give you a second. You then have to be able to solve that equation. Solve for X. Go ahead and move everything over to the other side. What did we get? Okay, so solving for x, I'm going to subtract the 25,000. 
I have to start there. I have no choice. 11,500. Oops, careful here. Delete. Minus 25,000. Okay, I get a negative number, which is good. We're going to see that in a second, why we need that to be negative. This is gone. Then we, this is multiplication going on here, negative 2,100 times x. So I want to undo that multiplication. So this is good that we ended up with the negative over here because that's going to give us a positive. And we need a positive for this answer. So you should have gotten 6.4. I think in the, in the test I say to round to the nearest year, that could round down to 6. Either of those answers are fine, though. I will take either. So notice in this question, the equation is the same. The information given is different. So this says three years. Once again, if they do not say write the equation, or again, we, we, they're not asking us that because we're given the equations. They can't be asking us that. You're going to plug in, and you have to ask yourself, am I plugging into x or am I plugging into y? So three years does that mean I'm plugging into x or y? This is x now because x represents years. So now that's where it's going to go. So I'm going to copy everything else. Literally, all I'm going to do is pop in the 3 to x. Now, the difference here is that my variable's already by itself, right? I can go straight to the calculator with this. So if you have to, if you plug into x, Straight to the calculator, you're good to go. If you have to plug into Y, you're going to have to move stuff over. But really, they're not much harder. One is not really harder than the other. Oops. So negative 2,100 times 3 plus 25,000. Careful, guys, here. If you drop the negative, dang it. Sorry, one sec. If you drop the negative on the 2100, you will get the wrong answer. So even though this question is technically easier to do, I kind of foresee a lot of people dropping this negative. We should get an answer less than 25,000 because 25,000 is our starting value, and the whole point of a car is it loses value. So that should be right there. So once more, on your test, you will only have one of these. You have to know how to do both, though. It's just luck, depending on which one you get. Okay, last one here. So this is talking about um, distance, traveling, driving, all that. We have to know which version, version of the um, distance formula we're going to use, right? So Lamar's car gets approximately 24 miles per gallon. Right there, that tells us which version of the formula we are going to use. We're going to be using this one here, right? Because we're given miles per gallon. So we're going to go ahead and copy that over. Uh, he's playing a 750 mile trip at an average price of 295 per gallon. How much does Lamar expect to spend for gas? So I, I'm, I call this one a harder question because there's a couple steps versus in most of these other types of questions, it's just multiply the two numbers, divide the two numbers, and you're done. Here, though, we do have two steps. If we want to find the cost, we need to know the price per, uh, sorry, we need to know how many gallons, right? I can't know how much money he's spending until I know how many gallons he would use in this trip. So remember how I kind of taught this? If you are using the formula, if you can look at this problem and know exactly what to do, awesome. Just do it. Don't worry about anything else. But if you can't look at this problem and know what to do, that's where we have the formula. So let's see what information we have, solve for what we don't, and then go from there. So 24 miles per gallon. Well, hey, that's the MPG. That's going to go in to the MPG spot. He is planning a 750 mile trip. What variable is that? That should be D, right? That's distance. So we're going to pop these into their spots, which is good, because that will have me solving for gallons, which I can then find the price of. So D is 750 equals MPG is 24 times the gallons. So if you were able to immediately look at this problem and go, I need to divide. You were right, at least to start, right? We have one more step after this. So you should have gotten 31.25 is the number of gallons. Oh, excuse me. I barely had any coffee yet this morning. It's just sitting there waiting for me. 
So that is the number of gallons. Be careful, guys. If you stop here, you're only going to get a half point. Because, go back to the question, it says, how much should little Lamar expect to spend for gas? So what should we do for this last step? We know how many gallons, and we know the price per gallon. What do we do to find the total cost? You should be multiplying this at the end by that cost. 295? Should get 92 point, this is 19-ish. And there we go. So once more, be careful. Always go back through and double check your question, your answers. Make sure that you actually answered the question. Like I said, if you stop here, you're going to lose points because you haven't fully answered the question. So those are the ones that I think, again, they're not necessarily hard. They're just the hardest ones out of the test. Um, that I think a lot of people make little mistakes on. Really, again, they're not that hard. It's just people just make a lot of little mistakes. So now go to the quizzes and do the full review. The quizzes is 11 questions, but the test will actually only be nine. That's because there's a couple questions where you might get one or the other on your test. Reach out to me and let me know if you have any questions.